Hey guys, welcome to week whatever. You're on the real DVD washers on Wednesdays. It's me, Tom. The movie that I've chosen to, to review today is something that a lot of people have been talking about because it's very much a visceral horror film. But yeah, again, I really feel that the word horror doesn't really justify this movie. I mean, yes, there are some creepy elements to it. It has an overall feeling, overall dark feeling, but it just feels like it just gets thrown into a horror movie. It doesn't really feel like there's a proper category to put this movie into. But, that's regardless. The movie has striked a lot of controversy. A lot of people, you know, are up in arms about how misogynistic this movie is and other things like that. But, in the same hand, though, the movie kind of makes a note as to not be misogynistic with the way how it's explained. So, the movie in question that I've just to, to review is Lars von Trier's Antichrist. This is the Criterion edition. What's happening in this one, it's about, a, it's about the, this man and the woman named he or she. Von Trier doesn't give the characters names. And it's told in four di di different chapters. The first one is the, apo sorry, it, 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 I think it's the, yes, yeah, the prologue, sorry. And in the prologue, um, we, we we see the couple, you know, having sex, and it's very, very, it's very beautiful, beautifully done, except there's a gra there's like a really gra graphic scene with the penis actually thrusting in, into the vagina, but it's really be beautiful, there's this song in the background, it's all done in black and white, and we see that their son it has woken up from, from the sleep, the son is like maybe all of two, and he's walking around the house, and he accidentally falls out of a window, and so from there, we get into the first chap, we get into the first chapter, and we see that that the woman is just so grief stricken, except her grief really it's like beyond the normal state of grief. I mean, she blames herself. She she has anxiety attacks because of it, and she's just utterly in inconsolable. At all times, she has no way of finding a proper way to get through her grief. And her husband, played by Willem Dafoe, he is he he he's a psychiatrist, so he takes on her. To help, and his wife, played by, uh, what the hell's her name? Char Charlotte Gen Gen Gensberg, you know, she's like, you are too involved with me, it's not right for you to be, to be my doctor. And so, while well, they're at home, you know, she goes through all, she goes through all these episodes, and they're trying to find the root of why she feels this way. And it really gets into the root of fear, and he asks, you know, what, what's the most, t most thing that scares you the most? She goes, the woods. And she goes, why? She's like, it's so open and just everything about it is frightening. So they, they decide for her to get over her grief and to conquer her fear and be able to move on. They decide to go to Eden, which is this forest, and they have this cabin. That way she, she can, you know, they can be alone and they can work on her fear. So really, and then like the movie Dol Dolph Zebra into how she uses sex as a way to, to, to console herself and how it isn't really right for her. She needs to deal with this pain she's going through. She uses sex as, as an escape. But then it really get, gets into how she was doing this case study about the the true evil of a woman and how they are essentially e evil and how, you know, the forest is the devil's church and all this stuff. And really it all builds up of this cr crescendo of in increasing creepiness and and self-mutilation and just departure from the average human psyche and it starts mix and it starts mixing in what we perceive as as logic and coherent things into the realm of you know the biblical supernatural evil and all that stuff that plays into really the, the, this movie is very visually appealing i mean von Trier used this new camera that actually allows him to distort the surroundings around a character so that way you see points where where she's walking th walking through th through the woods, and the camera, you know, is playing with bending stuff all around, and just so he has like a really increasing feeling of creepiness, which is really really good to see. And you know, there's great isolation scenes where you're just left alone, like delving like this character's fear and what compels them to do what they do, and this detachment from each other that eventually builds and escalates. Ah. Uh, but yeah, just, oh my god, this, this story is written in, in such a way that I wasn't really disturbed by, by it as some people were. I found it to be a little bit much at times. And yeah, you know, I get people saying, saying it's misogynistic because 
it, it in some ways it very much is. But in the same hand, though, all the things that make this movie miso misogynistic is what she is saying to Willem the Dafoe's character about women being inherently evil, how women need, need, be, need to be crushed and stopped in some some ways. But then Willem Dafoe is like, all these things you're taking your your basis off of were written back in the 16th century when women were innocently killed for no good reason. So. There, Von Trier does cover his ass by making it, by by showing us that you know this movie isn't misogynistic. These characters aren't misogynistic, but just it gets to a point you know where a man is pushed to the breaking point almost because because of what she is doing in the movie. I don't want to give too much away because I really want you guys to see this movie and to form your own opinion and actually see this stuff unfold in front of you. But the use of the bangers and say. Uh, in, in the movie, they, they discuss the three signs of, of coming death, which are the three baggers, and they're animals, and this also relates to a constellation. Why the hell they look up in, in the air? It relates to, 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 to this uh, constellation, and apparently what it is, whenever the three baggers come all at once, it means that someone must die. It's just the way how it is. And I really like how, how Willem Dafoe's character sees all three of them and how he reacts to all three. Because each one he has a different reaction to. And and the one, which is the fox, actually talks to, 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 to him. It says, Chaos Reigns. Which is also, the ti I think it's the title of Chapter 2 in the movie. But really what this movie does, do, does really well is it creates an element of creepiness. It creates an element of fear. Fear of your surroundings. Fear, fear of what's inside your own head. And fear fear of losing that that one that you love be it the be the child your husband your wife it really plays off that more so than you know a visceral horror film you know that we're used to seeing so for me i i don't know maybe it's because i'm used to seeing you know the more gory slapstick or like really intense horror movies that are actually horror movies but this movie it feels more like a drama with with some really horrible scenes i mean because for me, something like, like like Martyrs, as brutal as it is, for me, it doesn't feel like a horror film at all. It, it, ju it just feels like this thriller. But this movie isn't really a thriller. It's more or less a psychodrama, really, when you get right down to the heart of it. And I really think that's what Von Trier me meant to do with it, because it's really easy to lump this in with horror. Yes, I understand that, but in the same way, it's not. Uh, the acting in this movie is absolutely su superior. Oh my God! Th this woman who I've never seen seen before, this British actress named uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg, absolutely great to to see her in such these fragile moments, and you actually feel for her when she's crying her heart out at w w when you see her w when when her son's dead, and Willem Dafoe trying so hard to keep her together. I mean, it's such a fleeting part because you know it's not going to happen, but you just feel so sad for him. But then. Char Charlotte Gainsbourg character just has this moment where she just she just slips on a switch, and she's doing these horrible things to Willem Dafoe, and you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with this woman? Is she really inherently evil? As you know, this movie kind of puts forth. So, for me, really, this this movie really plays off that, and just watching these characters because if you don't have strong actors doing this role it's really easy for this movie to become cheesy if you don't have people who are committed to to these roles and willing to invest and willing to just go for it and not be afraid to what what that do because let's face it there is some stuff in here you have to have people willing to do some things or else you're or else you're not going to get what you want out of your actors i mean it's a very sensitive subject matter that we're dealing with here but the series shots too are so beautiful the Say this force they use they use in Germany or England. I forget where we have a shot. It looks absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Like I want to go to there. The series shots are just so great, and even the series itself adds this element of creepiness to it because there's these dark tones to it and desolate dead trees just lined with this forest. And it's like, what happened here? Is this really the center of evil here too? So yeah. Lars von Trier, he made something really interesting with this movie. It provoked us, it enraged us, but more or less it made us think about, you know, the nature of evil and also about the modern horror film again. So really, the, the, so, so really when you look at this movie, this movie is a great piece of cinema. But was it really for, for me... I don't know, because I'm still kind of out on it. I'm still not 100% sure if I even understood the movie. Truth be told, I mean, there's very few movies that, that I don't get, but I think this one is one that I absolutely didn't get. Truth be told, guys. 
So if I had to give Antichrist a rating out of 10, it would definitely get get a 6.5. Because, I mean, for, for me, I, I just got lost sometimes in this, in this movie. Like, yes, there's a streamline, but just I felt that, like, Von Trier really tries to to go outside of what we're used to and challenge us, which is good. But sometimes he does it way too methodically to the point where you're like, is this really what's happening? But, but, but like, he makes you du 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 double du double guess what you're thinking as to what his interpretation is, is supposed, supposed to be. Yes, no cinema is supposed to be open up into interpretation, but I'd really like to, really like, like to, like to know what exactly he needs with this movie so that way I don't feel so fucking stupid. So, yeah. So that's, a, so that's a review. Thanks to everyone who watches and subscribes. As always, you guys rock, and I will catch you guys in a week's time. Later.